Hey everyone, Wyatt here from Winnipeg Historical Fencing Club. So we're looking today at my interpretation of the fourth lesson of the play of the two-handed sword between two bucklers. So uh, in the previous video, I did lessons two and three, where we treated the chase more as an action than as a lesson, as the chase being a lesson, which seems like what hap like that's how it's used in the additional manuscript. So if you look at the fourth lesson, it says. The fourth lesson is a chase smitten with two half rounds with two cock steps, a quarter with a stop, and a hawk with a chase foin with a stroke avanture smitten on three feet and made up with a rake down and bore up with a double hawk and so serve the stroke avanture up on both feet. Bit of a mouthful. Uh, again, even some harder territory with the stroke avantures. It's not as obvious as, say, lesson three, just saying, you know, cut the elbows. Uh, but we'll, you know, we'll attempt this, try to get something that works, something that's a bit fun and martially valid and uh, makes a little bit of sense. So we'll start with a chase smet with two half rounds with two cock steps. Uh, so we can treat the chase uh, as a type of lesson for this first part rather than it being an action. So that means if the chase is a lesson, we would start off with just the two half rounds uh, with the two cock steps. And my opponent is just going to be parrying these rounds and passing back at the same time. So now I'll show it treating the chase as an action. So we're going to feint the hawk and then go in with our quarter blow with a cock step. It's going to get parried this time, but instead of the static binding kind of parry we have in lesson three, it's going to be a bit of deflection there. So they kind of knock our sword aside and we're going to keep that momentum going into those two half rounds, uh, advancing with our cock steps, and we're gonna drive the opponent back. He's do, do, gonna do the same, uh, just parries with the passes back here. So regardless of which one we choose, we can still end up in the same position. And this leads us to our next line of actions here a quarter with a stop and a hawk with a chase foin. So we're going to do uh, you know, rotate our sword through pendant, uh, giving us that quarter blow down with a step. And then we're going to do a hawk with a chase foin. So this is very similar to how it, we're kind of told to do it in lesson two. It's not exactly the same though. So, you know, you can interpret this a bit differently. I just do the same. So, you know, it's not perfect, but uh, it's an English long sword sources. It's confusing and doesn't make much sense anyway. So I'm just going to do the same action I'm told to do in lesson two. Uh, so I'm going to feint my hawk and spring off the foot with a thrust. Uh, the only difference here is that we're doing this uh, on the left side rather than the right side like I show in lesson two. Uh, yeah, let's take a look at that. With a stroke avanture smitten on three feet and made up with a rake down. So after they parry my thrust, I'm going to do my stroke avanture by shifting my weight to the rear foot and slipping their repost. Basically, I'm going to do a volta stabile uh, from the Italian sources. Uh, the stroke avanture tells us it's made up with a rake down, so I'm going to treat the stroke avanture more as a, as a draw cut than, uh, you know, of a, than a chopping action. And then the smitten on three feet can be confusing, but if we treat three feet as a measurement of three feet, this works well for doing the stroke avanture from the lunge position we ended up in from the chase foin, as you will see here. And bore up with a double hawk, and so serve the stroke avanture up on both feet. So I now cut two hawks, one on each side, with one step. This contradicts my earlier version of double hawks in other lessons, so I'll have to change those ones to my different interpretation uh, in time. But it's uh, kind of how I'm doing them now. The more I do it, the more things you know will change for me as well. So I'm going to serve my stroke avatar up on both feet. It's hard to know what it is implying, so I'm treating it as the rake is served on one foot and the double hawk on the other foot. Uh, so we'll do that here. And here I'll show the whole thing uh, put together in one sequence. So 
So that's my interpretation of the fourth lesson, more so based on the chases being the actions in lesson two. Uh, so I'm just doing this with uh, one of my students from last year, beginner student, so the fencing's not the, the fanciest, but uh, I do have to thank him for giving me a hand doing these videos, and at least we can kind of demonstrate the actions I'm trying to talk about here. Uh, if you have your own interpretation of these lessons, uh, please feel free to comment and share. I'd love to see them. Uh, and thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed.